Welcome to the first session of the last day. Uh, okay. So I will uh, briefly discuss uh, the fixed set parameter interactability. Again, we are not going into much uh, complexity theoretic details of this. Just uh, some basic, uh, say, a basic definition of uh, what this W hierarchy and uh, how to. Or, okay, there can be more methods also, but uh, a method to prove a particular problem is W hat. So, <coughs> today it's a fixed parameter interactability. As we discussed in the first session, just like polynomial time algorithms and uh, how we believe that uh, there cannot exist polynomial time algorithms for some problems, in fixed parameter algorithms also, there are some problems for which we believe fixed FPT algorithms don't exist. Okay. And uh, we have also said that for prob uh, pro parameterized problems for which uh, FPT algorithms are uh, known, we'll, we'll, uh, it, it becomes part of uh, the FPT complexity class. And all the other the hard problems, they, they are in one of the W uh, W T classes. Right. So let's come to W hierarchy. So what is different? Uh, what is the difference between a polynomial interactable problem and an FPT interactable problem? So what we so the polynomial interactable problem, what we know as NP hard problems. We know this property is true, right? All NP hard problems are equivalent to each other. What do you mean by that? You say that you have two prop two NP hard problems A and B. Then it is uh, you can show that there is a reduction from A to B. Similarly, there is a reduction. There is a polynomial time reduction from B to A, right? But uh, in uh, FPT or uh, para for parameterized problem, that is not true. For if you consider the parameterized hard problems. Mm -hmm. It is not true. They may not be equivalent. You take two parameter uh, FPT hard or W hard problems. Uh, <coughs> it is possible that, like, let's take uh, two problems A and B. It is possible that A can be reduced to B, but B B cannot be reduced to B. Again, here the definition of reducing or reduction is slightly different from polynomial. We'll come to that. And for this reason, we have we need a hierarchy of hard parameterized problems. And this hierarchy is known as the W hard problem uh, or the W hierarchy. And I mentioned uh, there are classes W1, W2, W3 onwards uh, for, for uh, FPT interactable problems. Okay. And we have seen the uh, or the okay we we have seen the connection between them, how they are related, contained, right? So uh, WT is contained in some WT plus something always. And it is believed that there, there is no equivalence or FPT. So the, the relation is FPT contained in uh, W1, contained in W2 and so on. And the conjecture or the uh, what we believe is FPT is not equal to W1. Of course, when FPT, if otherwise, if FPT is equal to W1, then the entire uh, hierarchy collapses, and uh, then we say that uh, all problems have an FPT algorithm, and, but it is highly unlikely that will happen. Okay. Now, what do we actually mean by W? What is the difference between a W1 class and a W2 class, and so on? Right? So, the technical definition is this. So a parameterized uh, problem P belongs to the class WT if there is a parameterized reduction. Okay, I haven't explained what the parameterized reduction is. We'll come to that. So just understand this uh, now. If there is a parameterized reduction from the problem P to, okay. So what is this problem WCSCTD? Uh, it is the weighted circuit satisfiability problem. So all of you have seen the satisfiability problem, right? Okay, you don't have to explain it. 
Okay, so the circuit, uh, so that's the circuit satisfiability problem. And what is the weighted uh, circuit satisfiability problem? So what is the satisfiability problem? Given a circuit, is there an assi uh, is there an assignment will satisfy the circuit? Okay, and uh, weighted is is there an assignment with a particular weight? Okay, with let's say with weight at most k, and by weight I mean the number of uh, values which are set to true or set to positive or whatever, right? Okay, so that is a weighted circuit satisfiability problem. Of course, the parameter here is the weight of the solution. Again, it is the number of ones in the solution. So, weighted circuit satisfiability problem, and uh, this for a particular class of circuits. Okay, so class of circuits with the uh, weft at most t and depth at most t. So if we take a problem and any parameterized problem, and if there is a parameterized reduction from that problem to uh, a weighted circuit satisfiability problem with the weft t, then it, that problem is in wt. Okay, and it is clear to now to you now why the containment, right? W1 contained in W2 is. Uh, and so on is true. Weft means the fan out of the, like the degree of. Okay, because weft of uh, degree at most t also means weft of degree at most t plus one, and therefore the containment. Okay, so by this definition, uh, so you take some. So usually most of for practically all the problems you see or the hard problems you see belong to W1 or W2. Uh, okay, uh, I am yet to see any problem which is in W3, but practically most of the problems that we study will, or the hard problems that we study will go to a W1 or W2. So let's just see some, uh, again this is the more, I'm not going beyond this technical uh, definition. There are also, you know, a lot of things to read about in terms of complexity theory, like what is like, what is what? How can you uh, define uh, a W1 class or W2 class in terms of Turing machines and all? Uh, but again, it's it's for a complexity theory lecture, so I'm not going to that. Again, there's a uh, what is an analogous theorem to a Cook's theorem in the, so. Okay, please uh, go back and uh, I'll say Downian Fellows is a good book uh, for to read about all this theory, complexity theory. So we are more interested in uh, algorithm design. Okay, okay. So these are some W1 complete problems. So W1 complete problems are W1 hard and uh, they are in W1. Uh, clique. Okay, so clique is one of the first problems uh, and a very useful problem when you are looking for reductions. Uh, then multicolored clique, an independent set of course it's kind of equivalent to clique. Uh, multicolored independent set, partial vertex cover. So we have already seen an FPT algorithm for vertex cover, right? Right. So uh, vertex cover is in FPT, but partial vertex cover is this problem. Uh, can you find a solution or can you find a vertex cover? that covers at least some k edges or something, okay? So at least k edges. So this problem is not in FPT. So when vertex cover is in FPT, so partial vertex cover where you don't have to cover every edge, but only a subset or a number of, a, fixed, uh, a bounded number of edges, then it becomes uh, not FPT. And uh, W2 complete problems. So <coughs> I want to stress this point again. So for all practical purposes, or when I say practical, all for the purpose of algorithm design, W1, W2, all these classes are kind of same, like all are hard problems. But there are technical, uh, like complexity, theoretical uh, differences. So W2 complete problems are uh, dominating set. Then dominating set for directed graphs, dominating set of tournaments, connected dominating set, uh, like a number of variants of dominating set, I'll say. Then set cover. Uh, 
set cover and uh, hitting set which is kind of a dual of uh, set cover. So all these are W2 complete properties. Okay. So I said the important takeaway from the lecture will be to uh, to know how do we show that a problem is W hot? Okay. So we we'll come to the easier case. Uh, in the polynomial uh, running time algorithms, how do you prove that a particular problem is, what is the technique used to show that a particular problem is NP hard? Reduce it to? Yeah. So you start with a problem which is already known to be NP hard and reduce it to the problem that you want to show to be NP hard. And uh, if it is, if this reduction can be done in polynomial time, the problem that you are uh, looking at is also NP hot, right? And uh, similarly here, we have FPT reduction. So if you want, want to show a particular problem is W hot, what you have to do is take a problem which is already known to be uh, W hot and reduce it into the, uh, the parameterized problem that you are looking at, or that you are investigating. Okay. But uh, now you are looking for what is known as a parameterized reduction, not a polynomial time reduction. And uh, what is a parameterized reduction? So, okay. So, a parameterized reduction from A to B is an algorithm that uh, given an instance uh, xk of A, so okay, we are reducing A to B. So get uh, given an instance of A, outputs an instance x prime k prime of B such that okay, the first point is uh, it's familiar. Xk is a yes instance if uh, of A if and only if x prime k prime is a yes instance of B. They are equivalent. Uh, okay. And uh, second is okay, this is a very important property that k prime that is a parameter of B in the reduced instance is uh, bounded by a function of k. It is independent of n or whatever. Just, it is just a function of k, which is parameter of a. Okay. So k prime is, uh, the size of k prime is bounded by a function of k alone. And yeah, third one, running time need not be polynomial. It can be FPT time. It's just f of k polynomial in the input size of A. So, parameterized reduction from A to B it reduces uh, any instance of A to another instance of B in FPT time and the parameter of B is, is bounded by, the size of parameter of B is bounded by size of parameter of A. Okay? And of course, this one is uh, what you, it's similar to what you have in a polynomial time reduction. And A has a solution if and only if B has a solution. So this is a parameterized problem. So, so by the definition itself, it is clear that let's say if uh, B has an FP, B, if B is in FPT and if we can reduce, uh, if there exists a parameterized reduction from A to B, then A is also in FPT, right? So you can reduce A to B in FPT time, solve B in FPT time, you get a solution for. A also. And uh, the similarly, if A is known to be W hard and if there is an FPT reduction from A to B, then B also need, has to be W hard. Right. Okay. So this is okay. So to prove some to prove a problem is in FP uh, is in W is W hard, you would have to uh, you have to have a parameterized reduction from a known FW hard problem to that problem. See an example of uh, parameterized uh, reduction. Oh, let's start with a known example, like with an example which is not a parameterized reduction. So you have seen this uh, uh, polynom NP hardness reduction from independent set to vertex cover, right? Have so what is that reduction? So yeah, given an yeah, given an instance of independent set, which is let's say a graph with n vertices, 
how do you reduce it to a vertex cover instance So the question is, uh, does the graph have an independent set of size k? Hmm. Will be? Yes. So it is easy to say. I'm not repeating it. So an independent, if there, is, if in a graph, if there is an independent set of size k, there is a vertex cover of size n minus k, right? Oh, I think all of you must have seen it. This is a very simple reduction you see in the uh, NP hardness lecture. So this is the NP hardness reduction. Uh, G has an independent set of size k if and only if G has a vertex curve of size n minus k. So this, from this, if you know that uh, independent set is uh, NP hard, it shows that vertex cover is also NP hard. You can even reduce a vertex cover to an independent set like this. Okay. But this is not a parameterized reduction. It's a polynomial time reduction. It worked for NP hardness. Uh, this is not a parameterized reduction. Uh, it cannot be, right? Because I just told you independent set is a W hard problem, and we have already seen an FPT algorithm for vertex cover, so it cannot be W hard. Of course, there cannot be a reduction like this. Uh, why is this not a parameterized reduction? Yes. So, what is the parameter? So, you so NP hardness. You are just looking at G, and this statement was good enough. Uh, in uh, the parameterized version of independence, it's G comma K, and what are you reducing it to? G comma N minus K. So, the size of parameter is a function of both N and K, which is uh, not a function of parameter. So. Therefore, this is not a parameterized reduction. Uh, before I go to the next, uh, so what about uh, other reductions? So what about, uh, can there be a reduction from independent set to clique? What is the NP hardness reduction from independent set to clique? Yes, so G, we are given a graph G. And G has an independent set of size K if if and only if G complement has a clique of size K, right? So what about that reduction? Clique, uh, independent set to clique. So that is, of course, it shows it is uh, clique case uh, NP hard. Does this reduction uh, tell you that it uh, clique is W hard also, given independent set is W hard? Yeah, parameter is again k and k in both sides. Okay, so that is so. Okay. So that is an FPT reduction. Okay, one more example and uh, yeah. So reduction from clique to clique on regular graphs. Of course, uh, like you no, know, if uh, uh, unless uh, otherwise mentioned, we can assume that the parameter is output size for all this. I'm not explicitly mentioning the parameter. So, clique parameterized by uh, output size. So, what is the clique problem? Given a graph, yeah, is there a complete subgraph of size uh, of uh, k vertices? Okay, right. So, clique parameterized by k to clique on regular graphs. Okay, so, again, I think this is also an NP hardness reduction, so it's possible you might have seen it. So we are given an instance of clique, uh, G comma K, G the vertex, and we are looking for a K clique. We want to construct a clique on regular graphs. So that means you want to construct a regular graph and show that the parameter is something related to K. So how do we do that? So we are given this instance G, and uh, let D be the maximum degree of G, and uh, take uh, D distinct copies of uh, G, uh, where D is the maximum degree of G. Okay, uh, and uh, so for every vertex there are D, D copies. 
and we'll call the copy of V in uh, GIS, right? And uh, okay. And also for every vertex, you introduce a set of vertices. How many vertices? D minus degree of that curve. The maximum degree minus the degree of that vertex. And add edges between every vertex of uh, this set uh, and every VI of, from, for each copy of G, add a vertex to the corresponding, uh, add an edge to the corresponding vertex of it, right? So you have the graph uh, G and uh, D is the maximum degree of G. So we'll make D number of copies of G. Okay. So this is first. And uh, what else? Also for every vertex, see, D is the maximum degree. Okay, so there may be some vertices with a degree less than K. Right? And we are trying to reduce into a regular graph. right? So we want to make all the degrees constant. All the degrees the same. So let's say we have a vertex uh, V whose degree is uh, less than D. Okay? So whatever is the uh, balance, like whatever, uh, so how many, how, how, what is the, what do you say? Uh, okay, wh how much the degree lacks, you will add that many vertices here corresponding to V. So in other words, like, let's say maximum degree is 5 here, but the deg degree of V is only 3, then you add 2 vertices corresponding to V. Okay? And uh, so this is the set corresponding to V. Okay? And uh, how, so let's call it V, capital V, V. And from each of these vertex, you add a edge to V in each of the, each of these copies. Okay? From each of them. So from here, uh, there is an edge going to all these copies. So this is the construction. Okay? So construction clear? So you take uh, D copies of the given graph G, where D is the maximum degree. And for each vertex, you add a uh, 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 as many vertices such that the, the degree plus the number of vertices here is the maximum degree. And for, the, for this set, you add H to all these in uh, each uh, GI and, okay, that's it. So each of these. Things. So this is, okay, what can we say about this graph? Did we get a regular graph? Right. So what is this? so? In other words, is the degree of every vertex uh, d? So take vertices here. Okay. Take vertices in uh, each of the cop each of the copies of GI of G. So here every vertex is of degree d now, right? Because whatever uh, whatever was the difference with d, it will have that many edges going to this set. So it degrees D. What about vertices here? Do they have degree D? They have, right? Because they have from each vertex there is an edge going to D uh, copies of G. Okay? So this is a regular graph. Okay. So we have got an instance of a regular graph. What can you say about, uh, so what's the parameter now? So let's call this G prime. So, what can you say about G has a clique of size K if and only if G prime has a clique of size K. Okay? So, how do you prove it? Yes. So, the one direction is easy, right? Assume G has a clique of size K, then of course G, G Prime will have a clique of size k. If G has a size of clique k. G1, G2, all of them have a size, uh, clique of size k. And this is true. Other direction, assume that G prime has a clique of size k. 
Yes, right. So, can any of these vertices uh, be part of a clique? <coughs> Size 2, okay. Uh, so, unless k equal to 2, and k equal to 2 and 1 are trivial instances, so we can assume that k greater than, uh, greater than or equal to 3, okay. So, this cannot be part of a clique, right, because its edges are going to G1, G2 and all, and G1 and G2 have no edges going across them. Okay, so this cannot be part of clique, okay? And also you cannot have a clique with vertices from here and vertices from some other GI. There are no edges going between, right? Therefore, the clique has to lie in some GI. Therefore, if it is completely inside a GI, then it is there in G also. And uh, this is an FPT reduction because, uh, okay, what is the running time? It is uh, some d times, it's a function of d and n, so we are assuming k is, uh, um, so yes, so and uh, yeah, and of course we have proved that a is a, uh, a is a yes instance, if and only B is a yes instance, and the parameter, what is the relation? It is K goes to K. So, both sides, parameter is the same. <coughs> for this. Therefore, this is an SPT reduction. So, the here is something function of D to function of size. Yeah, so size of, the, what is the size of the reduced instance? Again, it's uh, D times number of vertices is D, and yeah, so it's a function. Overall, it's a function of n because anyway, d is also upper. It's it's polynomial, n, right? And uh, so yeah, so the running time again it's polynomial, uh, not even if p t, but we are okay even with f, even if it was a t, but here anyway it's polynomial. And the parameter the parameter function it is uh, parameter like from here it goes to f another function of the parameter, and uh, of course. What will be? No, running time can be a function of k uh, multiplied by a, a polynomial in n. It's it's FPT, right? Hmm. But the reduction time is function of n. Can't you say that k power zero is that? No, no, running time was okay there. What was not uh, okay was uh, k was, what is the parameter in the reduced instance? It's n minus k, which is not a function of k alone. It's a function of n also, right? So, running time was not an issue there. Clique to independent set is FPT. Clique to independent set is FPT. Because again, it is uh, yeah, polynomial time and it's k goes to k. Yeah, so this is the reduction and click to click on regular graphs. Okay. So the new graph is a regular graph with uh, degree t and uh, gk is a yes instance if and only if g prime k prime is a yes instance. And therefore, click on regular graphs also it is uh, w hat. Okay. So these are the only lower bounds that I am discussing in this lecture series. But uh, again, there are a number of other uh, types of lower bound and other techniques involved uh, or techniques related <coughs> to them or techniques you can use to prove those lower bounds. So this was just proving something is W hard. Uh, you can even prove that uh, something about the running time. You might have seen it. So it's very similar to what you do in polynomial time also. Like you can give a lower bound on the running time that, okay, it cannot, even if this is FPT, the running time cannot be better than something like 2 power. So something like that, a function, an FPT function. And as I mentioned, you know, kernelization, lower bounds in kernelization is also very, uh, very <laughs> important topic. Uh, so kernel, so, okay, so, so this is true. Every FPT algorithm uh, or every problem in FPT will have a kernel. 
I, I didn't give the proof of this, but uh, this is a true statement. Other direction is easy to see, right? So if there exists a kernel, then it is in FPT. That's what we discussed in the class. So the reverse of that is also true. If a problem is in FPT, then it has a kernel. Okay. But what is the size of the kernel? So you can actually give uh, uh, lower bound proofs uh, like, so given a parameterized problem, you can prove results like it cannot have a uh, kernel of uh, certain size. For example, you can have, there are problems for which a polynomial kernel cannot exist or uh, let's say linear kernel that does not, by when I say polynomial kernel, I mean kernel of size, some polynomial function, okay. So <coughs> again, it can be done using reduction also, but there are more sophisticated techniques also which can, which are used to prove lower bounds in kernels. And uh, again, I'm not discussing it, there's something known as a conjecture known as ET as exponential time hypothesis and the stronger version of which the set, strong exponential time hypothesis. These, again, these are conjectures, but again, you can give reductions such that you can give a lower bound unless this conjecture is uh, disproved or something. Okay, I'm not going into details. If you're interested, please go back and read. Okay, so that's, that's my lecture today.